Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about my journey and how I passed the Certified Information Systems Security Professional Examination in six weeks, right? So disclaimer, I've been in the IT field currently for over two years. My degree is in cybersecurity, so I had a little bit of a background. I also have SEC Plus and um, CISA Plus. So that kind of helped, but still um, this examination, usually you have to have at least five years in the field, specifically in cyber. And um, yeah, it was, it was a pretty rough exam. So a general overview is that it is one of the highest, one of the highest or highly sought after examinations um for the private sector and for the dod um for the dod let me check here i believe it satisfies the dod directive 8140 so it both stands for um or sorry that directive rather um it pretty much has a matrix of different levels of certs so according to the dod directive 8140 um the cisp is for IA technical or information assurance technical level three and for information assurance uh information assur assurance can't speak English today management level three so pretty much it's all the way to the to the highest level because there's level one level two level three also it hits the information assurance system architecture and engineering level three as well well sorry um that is okay never mind so long story short, it's a pretty big deal in the cybersecurity world, right? Also, another thing is, is that you have another exam that is almost, I guess, on the same level, almost called the um, the CASP or CyberX, as it, I think CompTIA is calling it now, because CompTIA is the one that um, developed Security X or CASP Plus, whereas uh, CISSP is created by um, ISC2. ISC2 stands for International Information System Security Certification Consortium. A lot of acronyms here. But anyways, that's the organization that pretty much develops that exam. So let's get right into it. How did I pass this exam? So firstly, I, there's a, there's pretty much a harder, but a cheaper way, almost free way. And there is the expensive route, which I went through, right? So that was my secret. I, I pretty much bought a course and I'm not a sponsee of any of these things. I'm not, you know, being incentivized. This is just my experience. This is just information that I want to give out to maybe help someone who wants to tackle the CISSP exam. So First, when I started, um, I was using um, a particular gentleman's YouTube channel, which I'm gonna, which I'm gonna look up right now. So I was using this particular gentleman's YouTube channel um, by Inside Cloud Security. His name is uh, Pete Zerger. Um, he is a CISO, a V CISO, CSSP MVP certification holder. Um, a lot of people on Reddit recommended him but he pretty much has like a exam addendum. So he has addendums for updates on the CISSP exam. Um, he also breaks down the exam pretty well, in my opinion, because I went through his channel. I went through his videos, sorry, on CISSP maybe twice when I was driving to and from work. And I believe his current one was two years ago and it's a full cram course that I went through. And um, that was about eight hours, right? Um, and then the course that I went through, right, is called, um, from a website, Destination Certification. Make sure I give you the right, um, information here. Yeah, so I went through Destination Certification. Um, it was created by two Canadian gentlemen. 
I believe one of them was on the CISSP board. And yeah, it was a it was a really good class. And pretty much when you sign up, no disclaimer, again, I'm not sponsored by any of these guys, but that course did cost me fifteen hundred dollars, right? And that's not including the price of the exam, which the price of the exam itself is seven hundred and fifty. So I spent a good amount of money to um pay for this exam. All right. So um I'll put the link to the website to the course in my bio or not my bio but in my uh, description box sorry but yeah so pretty much the setup of the exam is that you start off once you sign up you pay your monies or whatever also i forgot to mention going back you can either pay the 1500 dollars up front or you can pay the money in um installments of five i believe right so that's what i did so i'm still paying for the exam because i think i passed the exam in like um june but anyways so you sign up and you make your account and then you pretty much can, um, you set up the speed of which you want to complete the course. So you can either do it for 10 weeks or eight weeks or six weeks, right? Or no, you can do it eight, six. They have a pre-made one that's like eight, six or four weeks. I did mine in six. I kind of customized it. it. I kind of customized mine. Um, also, the the cert or the program website, access to the website lasts for a whole year, right? So you have a whole year to pass the exam. And pretty much they have these pre-made videos that they order the eight domains in. So before I get into the, uh, the whole website or the course that I went through, let me actually show you the eight domains, right? So just a quick glance, and I also put the link to the website the isc the isc2 website so you can look for yourself for your information but you have eight domains domain one is security and risk management domain two is asset security domain three security architecture and engineering domain four is communication and network security domain five is identity and access management domain six is security assessment and testing domain seven is security operations and domain eight is software development and security right so back to the course. So for the course, again, it's set up where you have pre-made videos. They don't do the domains in the order that ISC2 has it. They have it in a way where I guess for them, and it kind of did make sense where it kind of flows. So you have these videos. At the end of the videos, you have what you call um, mind maps, where you can pretty much they give you an overview and you can write out stuff. They also have questions at each end of the domain. And, uh, at the end of the course, you have a mini exam. Um, but I don't want to give away the whole thing of the exam or the whole thing of the course, rather. So I'm talking about the course. But yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty good. The the information that the way that they lay out the information is it's pretty digestible. And um, yeah, I believe that without this course, I probably wouldn't have passed my first time because I only took this exam once and I passed. And I will say, unfortunately, the textbook that you, that ISC provides, ISC2 provides, is not good. Like if I studied from that textbook, because I did buy the textbook, I would 100% failed. That was the course. I did it within six weeks. Technically, I was ready at four weeks, or I think I could have taken the, taken the test at four weeks, but I wanted the extra two just to review because I'm paranoid. I will say the biggest thing going into the exam was knowing the mindset of a manager, because this is another thing that's completely different comparing C CISSP to CASP. CISSP is meant as is meant to test your mindset as a IT as a cyber security manager, right? IT system security manager, right? What is the best way as a manager to save the business money while at the same time minimizing risks to the business, right? Because the mentality is that you want to tie business, um, business or rather profit maximization. You want to tie profit maximization with risk management, right? That's, just, that's the, the whole mindset you want to do, go, go into. What answer is best that's overreaching that will save the business money 
save the business time and resources while minimizing risk as much as possible. But you have to have those two. And pretty much that's the mindset I, that I had. I always looked at the question and always thought to myself, what's saving the business money? What question is the most correct? And the biggest thing too is that you don't want to think in technical ways. You're not a technician, you're a manager. You want to think as a manager. So sometimes on the exam, you might see an answer that's super technical and it might seem correct, but it's not the most correct. And that's the thing that can trip you up, right? So yeah, I went into that exam and it was scary, man. It was like one of the most psychologically difficult exams that I've ever had. If I'm, if I think the, the, the test has 150 questions. I forgot how much time they give you. I think it's around three hours, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, when you do the, t so the exam is split up like this. And don't quote me on this. This is what I've heard. This is what I've experienced. So you start off with a hundred questions, right? So the test is based on an algorithm, if that makes sense. I forgot what the, the correct term for it is, but you do the questions and based on a particular algorithm, they'll either give you certain questions on a certain section if you get it wrong, or if you get it right, they'll move on to the they'll move on to the next question or the next section, right? So the first hundred questions, out of those hundred questions, twenty-five of those questions are dummy questions, right? They're questions that will not affect your grade at all. The other 75 are graded, right? They're, they're weighted, right? So once you get to test 100 or question 100 rather, at that point, you can either pass or fail, right? So if you get to a question, if you get to question number 100 and then you go to question 101 and the test is finished, more than likely, you either have a 90% chance of passing or a 90% chance of failing. So usually people who get 100, who go past 100 or get to a question 101 and they pass, pretty much they ace the test. The opposite is true. If you get to question 101 and you fail, that means you completely bombed. My friend, he got pretty much, he pretty much aced the test. I, on the other hand, I didn't almost fail, but I pretty much went on the whole duration of the test. So again, once you get to question 101 and you continue past 101, 102, that's where every question subsequent is weighted, right? So I was, I was psyched out, man. Um, cause every question I was hoping that I would pass, I would pass and the questions became increasingly harder like the questions between not even necessarily harder like a lot of the questions they became so obscure so off the wall that almost in a way they didn't even have anything to do with cyber security or the test material so i was freaking out on top of that during the exam um the power went out because it was raining or there was a thunderstorm i thought i had to do that test over for both me and my friend um that, that that's one of those tests where you don't want to go through it again. You just want to get it over with. It's, it's mentally draining. I think I passed my test at question 140 something, I believe. So, um, I was pretty much on the cusp of between pass and fail. I think I barely passed. Right. But considering that, you know, I took the course in six weeks i did only the course that's the only material that i use for the most part i use that course material and i use that um that uh youtube channel um i'll put it in the description again but it's by um peter peter ziggler pete pete ziggler um inside cloud and security so check that out if you want the free version if you want to prepare for the exam in a cheaper way but yeah it was a very psycholo psychologically um draining exam um, but it was rewarding after I passed the exam, um, I got my, my results and then I pretty much had to register. So you have to go back on the IS, ISC2 site, register, you get endorsed. So you have to have, um, someone with 
the cert already, the actual cert to endorse you, and, or you have ISC endorse you, ISC2 endorse you your, themselves, right? So what the endorsement process entails, just a little bit of a rundown, is that you have to give evidence of, I think, at least four years if you have a degree or certain certs, or five years if you have no degree or certain certs of IT experience within those eight domains, or I think two of those eight domains, two or more of those eight domains at least. So I pretty much put my um, military background because I had some experience with those domains. And I also had um, particular certs that helped me. And um, a brief description of what you did and why what qualified you. And then you send that to, or you, it, you um, upload all that information, fill out the form, and then it will go to the endorsee or the endorser that you want. And it took about maybe a month or seven weeks for me to get my actual certification and then you pay your dues. So I'm 100% um, CISSP certified. Really happy about that. Um, one of my biggest accomplishments in my IT career. But again, a little bit of a rundown because I know it's all over the place. Um, you can either do the free version I don't recommend the book at all. Do not get the textbook. Um, go use that uh, Inside Cloud and Security by um, Pete Ziegler, that guy's channel. Again, I'll leave the link in the description. I'll definitely use his uh, YouTube channel. And perhaps maybe you could check out something on Udemy or Cybrary, one of those um, learning websites, and maybe that could help as well. But again... I think that Inside Cloud and Security guy is pretty legit when it comes on to his information because his layout was pretty much close to the layout that I had in my course. So you can either use um, that YouTube channel, um, Inside Cloud and Security by Pete uh, Ziegler. You can either use his course. I would recommend writing notes, watching his videos over and over again to prepare for the exam. Or you could do the course that I did um, by destination certification and, you know, pay that fifteen hundred dollars if you can afford it and you know i think it's a pretty sure way of passing the exam uh relatively easily especially if you take your time you don't have to do it in six weeks that i did but yeah i think it was money well spent in terms of getting that high level cert but yeah that's pretty much my journey it was a very mentally draining exam the material in and of itself wasn't too tough it was just getting into the manager mindset and the CISO mindset and also, you know, just getting over that mentality of, you know, wanting to give up in the exam in, in and of itself. But the material isn't too tough. If you have some kind of background in um, cybersecurity, I would definitely not recommend this exam if you're just starting off in IT or cyber in general. But yeah, that's just my tidbit. That's just my experience that I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, what do you guys think? Are you guys interested in IT? Are you guys interested in this exam? Let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. And with that being said, guys, that's all I have for today. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.